Hey there, if you are a natural light photographer, chances are you were shooting in the green grass somewhere and you came home, looked at your images and realized that that green grass created really nasty green color casts all over your client's face. And you're wondering, can I even save this image? I am excited to share with you that you can save the image and I'm gonna teach you everything I do to get rid of green color casts in Lightroom in a few easy steps. So I'm Caitlin and I am a wedding photographer. I have been for 10 years. I am also an educator and I'm a mom. And on this channel, you will learn tips, tricks, and advice to help you grow a profitable and purposeful business while also letting you in to our family life at the same time. So we get asked this question all the time. How do you get rid of that green, nasty color cast, green skin tones um, when you're editing images? And I think what's important to recognize is why this is happening in the first place. Um, it's not something wrong with your camera. It's not. Um, um, something wrong with your client's skin. Uh, it is something wrong with lighting and this can be avoided and I would actually encourage you to figure out how to avoid it when you're shooting because you can avoid this completely for the most part every time you're shooting once you learn how to find great natural light. But I will say this, um, as someone who's been shooting for over a decade, I have been in situations every single wedding season where I can't avoid this completely. Um, and so it's important to know how to fix this and how to tweak this. Um, but hopefully as you grow as a photographer, um, the amount of tweaks and adjustments that you'll have to make will be fewer and fewer and fewer as you grow in your skill as a natural light photographer. But moving on to editing, I wanna show you how I will take an image with green uh, skin tones yellow flowers and green grasses surrounding my couple. And this is the interesting part. This image is a great example for this because I can't just strip out all the greens and I can't just strip out all the yellows. I would lose what makes this image beautiful to begin with. So I've gotta be really strategic in how I'm editing out these green skin tones and these yellow color casts. Okay, so this image, there's a few things that I want you guys to recognize as soon as you see it. First of all, it's, it's a beautiful location. But looking back, this was shot in 2014. And what I know now is that I never should have put them in this situation to begin with because even though it had beautiful foreground and it was backlit, there wasn't enough access to the sky to protect their faces from nasty green skin tones. So if I zoom in, you can totally see green hues mainly on her face and on the side of his face and on his neck and on his shirt collar and a little bit on his vest. And I think it's important that you really pay attention to where the affected light is, like where your image is struggling the most, um, because that will really help you understand what you're trying to fix. Because overall, I'm trying to really fix this area right here. I'm not trying to fix the green. The, the overall image looks green and it looks bad, um, but it's really just one part of the image that looks bad. This green and this yellow is not horrible. It's really the skin tones here that are not great. And now if you don't have a trained eye, you may think that this looks fine. You know, you may think like, oh, it's got some great rim lighting, like on the back of the head, he's protecting her from the harsh light. She has a little bit of highlight here, but overall it should be pretty, right? But as you start to learn how to shoot natural light and learn what you want, you'll start to realize that not only are their faces and his side of his face a little bit green, we've also got some green skin tones here and some green skin tones here on her dress, um, which really I guess wouldn't be skin tones, but it, you, you get what I'm saying. The highlight in this part of the image um, has a green tint to it that we want to avoid. But I think what's interesting is to point out, even though her dress has some green issues here and here, this part of the image, their faces, that is, the main issue. And that's what's going to make people think whether or not the image is good or not, um, or whether it has a gr great lighting scenario or not. It's not as much her dress as it is their skin tones. So let me get started with um, the KJ Basic Import preset. And what you might think is, oh my gosh, what did you do? Basically, if you look at my sliders here, these are just basic adjustments that I make to every single image. Um, and what my process normally is, I like to get the contrast and the pop ready. Um, and then I fix the color because what I've found, so I'm just brightening it a little bit, adding a little bit more contrast, darkening a little bit of the shadows. So I have the pop. And what I mean by that is um, I like the amount of brightness. I like the amount of contrast. Uh, and now I can start adjusting the color because I have that part of the image pretty much set. Of course, I will adjust it a little bit here and there, but I never want to do the color first because when you adjust the brightness and the contrast and the pop, it affects the color. So color always needs to be adjusted 
secondary, in my opinion. So there's a lot of different things that you can do. I think a lot of people try to fix their images by using the temperature slider, and there's nothing wrong with that, um, but by itself, it's not powerful enough um, to fix all of the green skin tones um, and also saving the overall image. So we're gonna have to kind of break the image into sections in my mind. So I know that the highlights of the image are where we're finding the most green color cast, and so that makes me realize that using split toning is actually a more effective way to fix the green color issues. Now, split toning is a beast in and of itself. I mean, I could talk about this for three hours, but um, I'm gonna give you just a basic overview um, because it's really important to understand when you're fixing green skin tones. Basically, split toning is changing the color of the highlights of the image, and it's changing the color of the shadows of the image just those parts of the image. And that's really important because when you change the temperature of the image overall, everything is affected. So the green grass, the yellow flowers, their hair, their skin, her dress, her flowers, his shoulder, everything will be affected by the temperature slider. But especially when you're photographing a Caucasian couple, um, split toning really affects the color tone of just their skin and normally their outfits if they're wearing lighter colors. So um, when I come down here, first thing I'm gonna do um, is I am going to start with some split toning at 10% for the saturation and then I always move, move the hue right in between the orange and the yellow. You may think, uh, Caitlin, that didn't help anything, but I'm gonna do some other adjustments. Um, so I'm gonna cool it down quite a bit to the point where it looks like it's way too cool. Um, but I'm gonna fix that later. So I'm cooling it down quite a bit, taking the green out of the tint to like plus 19. Um, and then now I'm gonna come back and fix, um, the reason I'm gonna use split toning is to fix the fact that they look a little too cold and a little too green. So we're at 10%, I'm gonna bump this up to 18%. Okay, so you saw that your skin tones got a little bit warmer. The shadows are gonna be more like 11%. I'm gonna move the hue over just a little bit. So what's happening is I'm gradually getting the skin tones to where I want them. But overall, when I'm looking at this, I'm thinking to myself, okay, we're getting there, but there's still a lot of work to be done. Um, for example, all of the green has a lot of yellow to it when it comes to the hue of the green. So I'm gonna to go to the green primary, take out a little bit of the yellow. Now look if I take out all the yellow, okay? That becomes, um, I mean, it's a pretty edit, but it's not my edit. Um, it looks very film-like and that's not, uh, what I'm going for. And so I'm just going to leave it right about here. And I'm going to go up here to the HSL color tab. And I'm going to go to the green. Now this is important. I'm going to desaturate the green, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to leave it there because desaturating the greens is not my style. So if I want the green to still pop without having a lot of intensity, I'm going to darken the greens with the luminance. I'm going to take some of the yellows out here. I'm going to bump that back up just a little bit. And... Now we're really getting somewhere. So I'm gonna go back up to the temperature slider, take more of the green tint out, take a little bit more of the temperature out here. And now I think we're gonna get into some nitty gritty like isolated editing. So when I come here, again, this is kind of going back to what I mentioned earlier. Um, I wanna recognize that their faces are what I'm struggling with the most. So I am going to go, sorry, there we go, um, to my brush here. I'm going to bump up the exposure just a little bit, reduce the saturation a little bit, and increase the tint towards the magenta a little bit, just for this part of their face and that little piece of her hair. Um, and that's because this is a pretty intense situation with greens. There we go, I love it. So now, and it's really interesting to me, once I get their faces in clean light, then the rest of the image really starts to take shape and I can see what I want. So I wanna add a little bit more contrast to make it pop a little bit more, pull down the highlights a little bit. I've been adding a little bit of texture because I think it makes it look a little bit crisper on the edges, but not much. Um, and we're getting really close to this being a final image that I'm really proud of, um, despite the struggles. So, um, so there's uh, three different things that I use to get rid of uh, the green skin tones. And let me just show you before, because a lot of times that was before, yikes. Um, a lot of times when you are editing an image like this and you're using the techniques that I am teaching you, it's a lot of slight adjustments and you don't realize that you are eventually getting to an image that looks like this, a final edit like this, because I'm doing so many little tweaks. So I adjusted the green primary, took out the yellow. I adjusted and added some split toning to 18% for the highlights, 11% for the shadows. Then I played around with the um, green um, color tab for in the um, 
HSL tab, um, which this can be a little bit confusing, but overall, I just took the yellow out, desaturated it, and then I made sure that it didn't lose its pop because I, I darkened the luminance. Um, and then last but not least, of course, I adjusted the temperature sliders. So rewatch this over and over again. If you find yourself like feeling a little bit lost, like what exactly did she do? Rewatch every single section, every single part of the Lightroom modules that I was adjusting. It's affecting a different part of the image. And that's my encouragement to you is to use these tools and use these tricks next time you have a color issue. But before you jump to using all these tools, make sure you study the image that you're working with and realize where the biggest problem lies. In this image, the problem was in the side of her face and the side of his face. It wasn't necessarily in her dress as much as it was in those areas. So by recognizing those problem areas, I was able to edit and figure out the overall fix to the image a lot quicker because I took time to study the image and really understand what was going on. So no matter what type of green color cast you have, this was just one example, um, but it was a good example. The original image looked pretty bad. Um, also the reason why I love this example is because just stripping out the greens overall to get rid of it, to get rid of the problem, was never gonna fix this image because the background and the flowers surrounding them would have been ruined. So I hope this was helpful and I hope you enjoyed learning, but let me tell you this, there is so much more that goes into figuring out and mastering your skill as a natural light photographer. This is just one small piece to the puzzle. So if you struggle with this and you think to yourself, well, Caitlin, that's a lot of work just to fix an image. You're right, it is a lot of work, but you could actually, um, yes, learn how to do this, but you could actually save yourself so much trouble if you could learn how to shoot and never have this problem to begin with. So I have a free class that I mentioned a little bit earlier where you can look at my examples of shooting in natural light, learn some of the main tips and tricks that I think every photographer needs to know as a natural light shooter. You can watch it for free. I hope you enjoy it. You can sign up for it at the link below. So if you like this, you learned something, make sure you subscribe so you can see more videos like this and I will see you next time.